Hi all, this is Tanishka from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session. Today, I'm here with a new topic that is Azure Service Bus. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our Edureka YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any updates. Also, if you're interested in Azure certification and training, do check out to the link given below. Today, we'll be learning about what is Azure Service Bus. Then, we'll look on to some of the key scenarios which will help us know why do we use Azure Service Bus. After that, we'll look on to some of the Azure Service Bus entities. Then, we'll compare two of the most important entities that is queues and topics. And lastly, we'll work on a couple of the hands-on based on Azure Service Bus. So first, let us understand what is Azure Service Bus. Azure Service Bus is a fully managed enterprise message broker which has three important entities that is message queues and publish and subscribe topics and namespaces. Before dwelling into these entities, let us learn what is Azure Service Bus and then why do we use it. So as I said, Azure Service Bus is a multi-tenant cloud messaging service that sends information between applications and services. It provides platform as a service communication platform built to allow more robust multi-tenant software system to be built in the cloud. So when you need a cloud-based solution to broker messages between different applications to reduce your coupling in your system, you can use Azure Service Bus. Now let us understand why do we use Azure Service Bus? As we know, Azure Service Bus is a messaging service on a cloud used to connect any applications, devices, and services running in the cloud to any other applications or services. As a result, it acts as a messaging backbone for applications available in the cloud or across any devices. Now let us understand some of the key scenarios that will help us to know why do we use Azure Service Bus. So first key scenario is it can decouple applications that allow each component to perform its task independently. That means producer or consumer do not have to be online or readily available at the same time. The load is leveled in such a way that the traffic spikes don't overtax any services. This also improves reliability and scalability of applications and the services. Next is Receivers and subscribers can receive copy of messages depending on the filter rules set on the subscription. It means you can define rules on the subscription. A subscription rule has a filter to define a condition for the message to be copied into a subscription and an optional action that can modify the message metadata. So this can be useful if you don't want a subscription to receive all the messages to send to a topic. Or if you want to mark up messages with extra metadata when they pass through the subscription. Next is two or more operations can be grouped in scope for execution. So there is a feature in Azure Service Bus that is transaction that groups two or more operations together for execution in a scope. It makes sure that these operations either succeed or fail jointly and not partially. That is why the scope is often referred as atomic, which means the entire transaction always succeeds or fails as one unit of work and is nowhere left in a half-complete state. With multiple concurrent consumer, you can process multiple messages concurrently to optimize throughput to improve scalability and availability and also balance the workload. This means you can allow for multiple competing consumers to read from queue at the same time, each safely obtaining exclusive ownership to the specific messages. Next is auto forwarding can be used to scale out individual topic. So auto forwarding is a feature in Azure Service Bus that enables you to chain a queue or a subscription to another queue or a topic that is a part of the same namespace. When auto forwarding is enabled, Service Bus automatically removes that are placed in the source that can be first queue or a subscription and then puts them into the destination that is into the second queue or a topic. You can also schedule a time to process the messages. That means you can submit messages to a queue or a topic for delayed processing. 
for example to schedule a job to become available for processing by a system at a certain time so this capability realizes a reliable distributed time based scheduler schedule messages do not materialize in the queue until the defined in queue time before that time schedule messages can be cancelled which deletes the messages you can also schedule messaging using any of our clients in two ways either use the regular send api but set schedule in queue time property on to message before sending so schedule messages do not materialize in the queue until the defined in queue time before that time schedule messages can be cancelled which deletes the messages now that we have come to know why do we use azure service bus let us know some of its important entities so first is namespace so what do you mean by namespace a service bus namespace is your own capacity slice of a large cluster made up of dozens of all active virtual machines so basically it is a container for all messaging components so here multiple queues and topics can be in a single namespace or namespaces so as you can see in this diagram this is a container which has queue and a topics and subscription so it is a container for all messaging components which can include multiple queues and topics so you can have multiple topics and queues in a single namespace or namespaces which can later serve as an application container so you can think of a service bus namespace as a server with its own capacity of large cluster of all active vms this makes the service bus as an available and reliable service to scale without us needing to manage the service next is topics and subscriptions so topics and subscription are the message oriented middleware that is responsible for holding and delivering messages to the subscriber so basically it provides one to many form of communication in a publish and subscribe pattern it is useful for scaling a large number of recipients each published message is made available to subscription registered to that particular topic so when a publisher sends a message to a topic one or more subscriber receive a copy of the message depending on the filter rules set on these subscriptions so as i said in previous key scenarios that subscription can use the filters so here they use the additional filters to restrict the message that they want to receive so the consumers don't receive messages directly from the topic instead consumers receive messages from the subscriptions of the topic so when a subscription is created you can supply a filter expression that operates on the properties of the messages the properties can be both the system properties for example label and the custom application properties like store name so as we look on to this diagram we do have subscriptions along with the topics to process the messages so the sender sends the messages to a topic in the same way that they send the messages to the queue but it varies in a slight factors where the topics can have multiple independent subscriptions so as you can see there are multiple independent subscriptions which is colored in red green and yellow so subscriptions are durable by default but can be configured to expire and then can be automatically deleted as well so here we can define rules on a subscription and then a subscription rule has a filter to define a condition for the message to be copied into the subscription and an optional action that can modify the messages to the metadata this means you can by applying filter we can decide which messages should be sent to which receiver so as you can see here we have applied filters so for an example the messages highlighted in red are to be sent to the receiver which is highlighted in red whereas the green one goes to the green and the yellow one goes to the receiver which is discolored in yellow so this is a simultaneous process here as it is a one to many relation so we can send these messages to the n number of receivers which are subscribed to the subscription now if we talk about queues 
As we know, queues offer first in and first out message delivery to one or more competing consumers. That is, receivers typically receive and process messages in the order in which they are added into the queue. And only one message consumer receives and process each messages. So as you can see in this diagram, this is a queue and the sender when it sends the messages, it goes into the queue in a synchronous way, like in sequence, one by one, first in, first out. So here, the system can have multiple senders. So as you can see, a sender has sent the messages and it has been organized in the queue. Now only one person can consume the messages at a time. So here, if you see the person one, consumes the first messages and then the second person can consume the second messages as it is synchronous process and lastly the third consumer can consume the message so this is how we send and receive messages through the queue so a key benefit of using queues is to achieve temporal decoupling of application components in other words we can say that means the producer that is a sender and a consumer which is a receiver don't have to send and receive messages at the same time. That's because messages are stored durably in the queue. Furthermore, the producers don't have to wait for the reply from the consumer to continue to process or send messages. Now that we have come to know about these entities, let us compare the two most important entities that is queues and topics. So we'll be comparing them based on some of the important constraints. So first constraint is consumer options. Here in queue, multiple server receivers can be added to the queue, but each message will be sent to one of them. As I said, it is one to one relationship. So one single consumer can receive a message at a time. Whereas in topics, the messages can be received by numerous recipients as it offers one to many relation and each message copy can be delivered to any number of subscribers linked with that particular talk. Next is message filtering. In queues, because the messages are only received by one person, queues do not require any filters. But in topics, a collection of attributes can be attached to each message broadcast across a particular topic. When a custom subscription filter is applied, then these properties are utilized. Next is consumer scalability. In queues, if you need to scale a queue, you are still limited to having the one consumer. Whereas in topics, does not need to be recreated. When new subscription is formed, all new messages submitted to the particular topic are also received by the new subscriber. So once a new subscription is created, this can be more scalable than queues as more than one consumer can receive messages. And once a new subscription is created, all new messages that are sent to that particular queue will be received by the new subscriptions also. Let's look on to few more constraints. Next is message auto forwarding. So in queues, messages can be automatically routed to a queue or a topic. However, a topic subscription cannot be a destination. Whereas in topics, messages can be sent automatically from a topic to a queue or any other topic. Additionally, messages from topic subscription can be sent to a queue or a topic. Message removal. In queues, the first receiver who finishes reading the message also removes it from the queue, preventing further readers from processing it. Whereas in topics, the message is removed only after every receiver has processed the particular message. So when the message is read by all the subscribers, the message is then removed from the topic too. Last is use cases. So we choose service bus queue when there is a need to pass the message in the one-to-one -one system. Whereas we choose topics when there is a need to send messages to multiple system. So these were the key differences between queues and topics. Now let's understand the concept with couple of hands-on so that we understand how do we send and receive messages through Azure service bus. So our first hands-on is sending and receiving messages by queue. So here I'll be using the Python program to send messages to and receive messages from Azure Service Bus queues. For this, we must have Azure subscriptions. I hope most of us might be having the Azure subscriptions. 
If not, you can sign up for free and get the subscription through Azure portal so that you can get access to many services. So let's quickly move on to our Azure portal. So here we will be first signing in. So let's quickly sign in. After signing in, we'll directly drop down to our dashboard. So here, as you can see, there are many different services. So let's quickly create our service bus. So once you log into your Azure service, our first step is to create our service bus. So here, as you can see, we have the service bus option. So just directly click over here. Now, as you can see here, we have no namespaces yet. So as we had discussed, that what are namespaces. So here they are nothing but containers. So we need to create a container over here. So let's quickly create a namespace. So before using any services, we must have a resource group. So if you already have a resource group, then you can use it or you can create a new resource group. So let's quickly create a new resource group. So let's name it as service bus demo one. Okay. So this is our resource group. Now what do we need to do is to give our namespace name. So let's name it as well. Let's name it service bus demo one. Okay, it shows it already exists. Let's add a few more details. Okay, now as you can see, it has been checklisted and now you can choose your locations as per your requirement. So I'll just choose West US and now it comes to our pricing tier. So here, as you can see, there are available pricing tiers. So as you can see here, it is premium standard basic. So in basic, we might not get all the requirements or all the features which we might require while using our services. So we'll go ahead with the standards as premium requires some of the amounts we, like we need to pay some amount so that we can get an access to all those features. So here we'll be choosing standard. Once you create your namespace and choose your location and your pricing tier, we'll just move on ahead. So here we'll not be, we'll be keeping everything in default and let's review and create. So as you can see here, it is validating all the details and once it is validated, then we can create the service bus. So our validation is succeeded. Now we'll just quickly create it. As you can see here, it has been initialized. It will take a minute or two, like it won't take that much long, but yeah, it will get started to deploy. So yeah, here our service bus has been created. And now it is showing deployment is in progress. So this might take some time. So as I said here, I'll be using the Python programming. So every one of us know it is quite easy to use. So whereas you can use any other programming languages or other packages like NuGet package or to like work on with the Azure service bus. So here first we'll be seeing how do we send messages into the queue. And then we'll see how do we receive messages from the queue. Now, what do we need to do is go to our resource. Once you land here, you can see just see the overview of your service bus. So you can see in under which resource group it is being located and what is the status, location, and your subscriptions and your pricing tier, everything. Now, our next step is to create a queue. So as you can see, we have no queues over here. So you can come to these entities and you can just select queue and from here we can create a new queue. So let's just create a new queue. So here also we need to give a name to the queue. So let's name it as service bus demo one queue. Sounds good. And here as you can see your maximum queue size is one GB. So it has been given as a default whereas you have, you can change your maximum queue size based on your requirements and you also have the maximum delivery count. So here the maximum delivery count is your number of like how many times you can send the messages or you can process the messages. So here, as you can see your, you have a value range from one to 2000. So here the default value will keep it as 10. 
and rest is your message time being live so it has been kept for 14 days so let's keep it as it is we'll keep it, everything as default and let's quickly create so here you can see your service bus demo queue has been created so if we'll just click into it you can just see the overview of the queue so here you can get to know how many messages are have been sent or either had it has been scheduled or not so now that we have created a service bus we have also created the queue now our next step is to create a program so that we can send messages into the queue so first let us create a folder so that we can store all our programming files into it so as you can see in i have created a folder as azure service bus so here what do i do i'll store all my python programming code uh, files so that it is easy for me to locate so now what do we do is open a notepad all right now here we'll be writing a code to send the messages into the queue so as i said we'll be using the python language to work on with the azure services we'll be writing the code in python so for that make sure you have the higher version of python installed in your system so that you can even install the packages what uh, when we need to import it so let's quickly open our command and let's see what is our python version so as you can see here we'll just check our python version so as you can see this is the latest version of our python so make sure you have the latest version of python so that it is easy for you to work on with the codes and as well as your process goes very smoothly as we have our python installed in our system now it is time to install the packages for azure service bus here we'll install the azure service bus client library for python so that we can create a connections which will help us to send the messages and receive the messages so let's quickly install our package first pip install azure service bus all right so i've written a wrong code so we'll just correct it and we'll hit enter so this is the command for installing the packages so here it shows that my packages are already existing so previously i had already installed my packages so it is available as it you can see here the version of the package is already available now what do we need to do is start so now what do we need to do is write a python program so that we can send the message so first thing is to create an import statement so this means you are importing the azure service bus package so from azure dot service bus import so here we'll be importing the client as well as the service bus message now that we have imported our service azure service bus so now here we'll be mentioning our connection strings and our queue name so str is equal to here we'll be mentioning our connection string so what is a connection string over here so as we go to our azure portal and we'll go to our service bus so here once you create a queue we need to authenticate that particular sender so that they can send the messages into the queue so here we'll be mentioning the namespace connection string so that the sender whatever message he wants to send into the queue it can go through these connection string so we'll click on to this root manage shared access so as you can see here you can either manage send and listen you have all the three process to it so we'll just copy the primary connection string you can use the secondary connection string only if your primary connection string doesn't work so we'll quickly have we'll copy this primary connection string and we'll paste it in our code all right so once that is done now we need to mention our queue name so our queue name was service bus 
demo one q all right it has come into caps lock we need to change the case service first demo one q all right so this was a q name which we had created now the next step is we need to add the method so we now we need to create a message so that we can send the message into the queue so here we'll be adding a method to send a single message so here the sender is an object that act as a client for the queue that you have created so let's quickly create a method so def send single message so here we'll be mentioning the object that is a sender all right i hope this is clear now so now as you can see over here we imported our like we did we have imported our package into the code and then we create a connection string and we mentioned the connection string over here and the name of the queue which we have created now what do we need to do is to create a method so here we will be sending a single message now we need to create a service bus message so how do we create that is message is equal to service bus message so as it is a single message so we'll be mentioning here as single message now this message has to be sent to our queue for that we'll use our object that is sender dot send message now we'll mention the message that we have created and there we'll print it as sent a single message so this was for uh, uh, like this was a method to send a single message like this we can also send a list of messages or a batch of messages where we can give the value of how many times the message has to go so let's quickly add those methods too so def send a list of messages we'll mention our object that is sender and then we'll have the same code over here so we'll just copy paste and we'll change the values here we as we are sending the messages in list so we'll write it as message in list and we'll mention the range till how many range it has to go so for range 5 okay i need to add the square bracket all right now we'll change a statement that is sent a list of five messages all right so now that we have created the list of messages now let's create a batch of messages for that now let's first define our method that is send batch of messages and we'll mention our sender and now we need to create the batch of message for that we'll write batch messages is equal to sender dot create message batch so this is the method that we are creating over here now we need to provide a range that how many messages can be sent so as we had mentioned before in our previous in the list of messages here will be mentioning in a range of let's take 10 and then now we need to add messages into the batch for that we'll batch message dot add message now we'll mention our service bus message now in this 
will write messages inside a service bus message now we'll write a following code accept value error break now that we have created our batch message we have added the messages into the batch now we need to send this batch message into the queue for that we will write sendo dot send message batch message and then we'll write a statement that is sent a batch of 10 messages now that we have added the methods now we need to create a service bus client and then a queue sender object to send these messages so let's quickly create that so first we'll be creating a service bus client using the connection string so for that we'll type service bus client is equal to service bus client from connection string and now we'll mention the connection string which we had mentioned above so connection str is equal to and logging enable is equal to true so we are giving them the access now with this service client we're gonna get the queue sender object to send the message to the queue so let's write that with service bus client sender is equal to service bus client dot get queue sender and now here we'll mention the queue name which you had created so queue name is equal to queue name after this now we need to send the three types of messages that is single list and the batch so for that we need to write with sender send single so here we'll be mentioning the methods which we had created so here let's quickly create all of them we'll just copy this and we'll paste it and we'll change the method name and lastly we'll just mention it done sending messages all right so this was a code for sending the messages into the queue now let's quickly save it so we'll save it in our azure service bus folder itself so let's name it as send queue message or we can just send write it as queue send message and dot py as it is a python program and we'll save it all right so this is our whole code that is to send the messages into our queue so let's quickly move to our command prompt so let's see in our folder whether it has been there or created or no so here as you can see it is a python program has been created now what do we need to do is go back to our command prompt and now let's run our program 
so as you can see the program has been run successfully your output has come send the single message the list of five messages send a batch of 10 messages so now let's quickly move to our azure portal and check whether the messages has been sent or no so we'll go to our service bus and we'll go to our queues all right so here as you can see previously we had no active messages that was zero messages now we have 16 active messages now as this means your messages has been sent into the queue now if you want to see these messages like what messages are being sent over here so we'll go to our service bus explorer so here we can do all the three processes that is see or peek the messages receive the messages and send the messages so currently we are in peak mode so we'll go peak from start and now as you can see here there are almost 16 messages over here now you can select any one message and see it is a single message now let's move on to our different topic so this one is message in list let's try our different okay so here it is shown whatever we had written into our code it has been shown over here so this was our message message inside a service bus message batch so we can see here it is shown and you can also count the number of the range what we had given over here so for a batch we had given up to range 10 so let's count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 let's see okay so we have 10 messages like that and we have five messages of list so this is how you can see your messages from the queue now we got to know how to send messages into the queue now it's time to receive the messages from the queue so for that we'll go back to our notepad now we'll just open a new file and here we'll write a code for receiving a message so on our previous program we had created a code in which we had added methods for sending the messages into the queue now what do we need to do is to receive all these messages from the same queue for that we'll just copy the upper code that is our from the azure package the connection string and the queues and we'll just paste it over here and then we'll also mention our service bus client that is which we had used to like where we had created a service plus client so that we can send these messages now after this what do we do is we write a code for receiving these messages so let's quickly write the code we'll mention our queue name and we'll define a maximum wait time for it so let's define maximum wait time is equal to 5 and now with receiver we'll receive the message so for message in receiver print received and we'll mention the message now receiver receiver dot complete message and we'll mention the object so here we mention this command is to like complete the message so that the message is removed from the queue so once the receiver receives the messages so there won't be messages available inside the queue so this is the whole code now let's save it we'll mention it as queue receive message.py 
and let's move on to our command prompt and let's clear everything and let's see and now let's run the program so as you can see all your messages are being received from the queue all right so here you can get the notification received message in list received single message so all these messages are received by the receiver now let's quickly go back to our azure portal and quickly check whether the messages are still there or no so we'll go back to our queue and let's check all right now as you can see here we don't have any messages now this is because the receiver has received all the messages from the queue so this is how we send and receive messages through queue now let's quickly move on to our next part of the hands on in which we'll see how to push and pull messages by topics and subscriptions so in this also we'll be using the python program to send messages to a service bus topic and then receive messages from a subscription to that particular topic so it is quite simple scenario of sending a batch of messages or a single message or a list of message to the topics and then we'll receive those messages from the subscription that we have assigned under that particular topic so for that first let us create a new topic so let's quickly go to our portal so we'll follow the same step we'll go to the azure service bus so anytime when uh, like while creating a queue or a topic first thing is to create a namespace and then we can add on the number multiple queues and topics under it so let's quickly create a new namespace now if we'll follow the same step we'll give a resource group name so service bus demo and now we'll give a name to the our namespace so service bus demo all right so let's change this name okay so as i said you can choose any locations as per your requirement and then we'll come to our pricing tiers so we'll select standard and then we'll quickly create okay so our validation is succeeded now let's create it all right so our deployment is complete so we'll quickly go to our resource and now we'll go to our topics so previously we had selected queues now we'll select topic and now we need to add a new topic so let's quickly create one so how did like in previous hands-on how we had created the queue so in the same way we'll be creating our topic so let's give a name to it service bus topic and as we know maximum topic size will be 1 gb and the messaging time to live is till 14 days so let's keep it as default let's quickly create okay now we need to create our subscriptions as well so we'll go under this topic and we'll create our subscriptions so we'll quickly go to our subscription section and we'll create a new subscription now we'll click on subscription and here we'll mention the name service bus sub and the maximum delivery count so as i said the default maximum delivery count is 10 whereas you can change your delivery counts if you have a, you have a value of ranging from 1 to 2000 so you can take up to that so rest other things would be kept default and let's quickly create all right so our topics are created and our subscription has also been created now let's quickly open our notepad all right so here we'll be writing our python code so that we can send messages into the topic so as usual first we'll write the import package code so our import package code is from azure service bus import service bus client 
कॉमा सर्विस बस मैसेज राइट ओके नाउ वी नीड टू एड आर फॉलोइंग कॉन्स्टेंट दैट इज आर कनेक्शन स्ट्रिंग टॉपिक नेम एंड आर सब्सक्रिप्शन नेम सो लेट्स क्विकली राइट दैट कनेक्शन स्ट्रिंग इज इक्वल टू सो फर्स्ट लेट्स राइट द कोड देन वील एड ऑन ऑल आर वैल्यूज टू इट टॉपिक नेम स्क्रिप्शन नेम इज इक्वल टू ऑल राइट सो फर्स्ट वील copy our connection string that how do we go we'll go to our azure service bus demo and we'll come here to shared access policy and from here we'll copy our primary connection string now let's paste it after that our topic name so our topic name was service bus topic and our subscription name was service bus sub all right now that we have given our constants now let's quickly add our methods so like before how we had sent a single message then a list of message and then a batch of message so let's quickly add the methods now so def send single message now we'll create a service bus message so message is equal to service bus message and here you can specify your message so let's write hello and then we'll send now to send this message to the topic so we'll specify sender dot send message that is our message what we are that is hello so we'll be sending that messages to our topics now we'll print we'll just check our indentations all right now that we have added our single message method now let's add a list of messages so def send list of messages sender now we need to create a list of messages so how do we create is message is equal to square bracket service bus message hello how are you doing so you can type down any message of your choice it's just for an example and then we'll specify a range so for in range so here we'll specify let's say 6 and then we need to send this message to our topic so sender dot send messages now we'll create the same for our batch of messages so let's quickly create that so what did we do now we have created a batch message and now in this we'll add messages into the batch so now we'll just complete this method so here we'll add a break so that the service batch object reaches a maximum size and then you can create a new service bus batch object to send more data take all right now we send the message to our topic the so sender dot send messages dot batch messages print now we'll specify send a batch of 10 messages all right now that we have added the methods now it's time to create a service bus client and then a topic sender object to send these messages so let's go down and first thing we'll create 
a service bus client service bus client is equal to service bus client dot from connection string so here we'll specify the constant that we had specified up as you can see here so we just need to call it over here so connection string is equal to connection name now after this we'll get a topic sender object to send the messages to the object so as we had specified here the sender object so we'll create one over here so sender is equal to service bus space bar client dot get topic sender and now we'll specify the topic name all right now next thing we need to send all the messages that is single list of messages and batch first so for that with sender now we're going to call all the methods over here send single message sender send a list of messages and then our batch message all right lastly we'll just print done sending messages now we're gonna save this so service will go to our previous folder that was azure service bus so service bus topics and now we're gonna dot py now we'll save it so this is the whole code where we used to send the messages into the topic now let's quickly move on to our command prompt now let's run our python code so as you can see our messages have been sent successfully now let's quickly move on to our azure portal and let's go to topics let's check whether the messages have gone or no all right now we'll just enter our subscriptions and here as you can see we have 32 messages all right now if we just go to our service bus explorer we are able to see the messages what are sent what has been sent into the queue so let's go to peak from start now you can see here single message messages in list so these were the previous messages now you can see over here hello hello how are you doing this shows that the messages have been successfully sent into the topic now we'll see how do we receive these messages from the topic now let's go to our notepad now let's quickly open our new notepad so we'll go by control new and now let's write the code for receiving the messages so we will just copy the previous few codes so we'll just open this so here we need to import our packages first and the connection string so we'll just copy and paste it and now what do we need to do is to take this service bus client and we'll paste this and now we need to write the code for receiving messages so it's a very simple code here we need to get the subscription receiver object for the subscription so as we discussed that the receivers can uh, will receive their messages from through the subscription so we need to create a receiver object and then we'll complete the messages so that the message is removed from there so it means like once the receiver receives the messages the message the topics uh, and subscription will get emptied so there won't be any messages left so let's quickly write a code so with service bus 
slide. Now here we'll mention our topic name. So let's quickly mention is equal to and here also we'll also uh, describe our subscription name as the receiver will receive from the subscriptions. So let's quickly mention that. And we'll specify the maximum wait time. Let's give it five. So it means that this code continuously receives the new messages until it doesn't receive any new messages for five seconds. All right. So now let's complete the messages. So with receiver for message in receiver and now we'll specify print received and now we'll add the message str message receiver dot complete message so this is the whole code for receiving the message so let's quickly save this all right so let's mention it service bus subscription dot py so this is the whole code that we'll write to receive the messages now let's quickly run our code all right so here you can see that we have received the messages so all our messages have been received by the subscriber okay now let's quickly move on to our azure portal and now let's refresh this so here you can see now no messages are left in the subscription because all the subscribers have received the messages so this is how we send and receive messages through topics and subscriptions so in queues the sender used to send the messages into the queue and from there the receivers used to receive the messages one by one whereas in topics the sender sends the messages into the topic but unless and until we subscribe we are not able to access any of the messages so once we create a subscription and we have number of subscribers then we can receive all the messages from the topics so this was all about azure service bus in this we learned what is azure service bus and we also saw different entities that is namespace queues and topics as subscription we also learned how to send and receive messages with queues and topics and subscriptions i hope you like this session until then happy learning i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!